bust and we got Robbie humbled. I'd known you since you were a kid. I could blow my knee out, both knees, and still kick your ass. <laughs> we're trying to find the Robbie Hummel statue. I wanted to kill you. <laughs> All right, welcome in another episode, maybe the final episode, I don't know about ever, uh, but for a little while, because you're going to be on the golf course. I mean, you already overslept. We were supposed to do this an hour and 41 minutes ago, and you just woke up. You're like, my bad. I, I you know, I'm I said, sorry. I said, I was sorry. I said, my bad, and I'm sorry. Yeah, this was, um, I mean, come on. Like, like you made a commitment. I know I, did. I know I did. I know I did. I know I did. I know I know. And now you you you're so tired because I feel like I look better. I think at the final four I looked like a zombie the whole time. Oh, you time. look terrible. You look terrible. I agree. You were I agree. You, you had a lot going on. You know, your Purdue team was there, so you had your boys in town. Logan was with you. Um I, I never really saw you much. I saw I you. Know, I didn't get bit. to see I didn't get to see you guys really either. Yeah. Um you wouldn't leave this, the pool. I guess I didn't. That was the I problem. Didn't. We tried to get you to the show, but you literally, you were like, well, I'm at the pool. I'm like, come on, man. What are we doing? I here? was having lunch with, with Logan. We were we were watching Kalen Clark play and uh, eating at the, the pool. Um, oh, yeah. I was going to say, I I guess I'll just take this, this tardiness, which I did yeah. not mean to do. Yeah. As that's payment. That's payment for you not wearing the undershirt. And we'll have to. Which... I actually have, I I have, and I'm going to play it later, the uh, <laughs> the audio of the bet we made the week before the Purdue Arizona game, and let me tell you, there is nothing in that wager about not being able to wear an undershirt. I'll, I'll play it at the end of the podcast, just so you know, and you, know, you can you know hear. This it. means this this means that I Trevor's on my shit list because I know he helped. It wasn't Trevor. That. It was not Trevor. I promise. It was Dagan. Dagan not Dagan. It, I promise you. We have we have multiple producers. I know your Dagan. ass did not go back and look at no, it. No, it wasn't me. It was... Way too lazy <laughs> and way too technologically terrible to go back and find them. We got a big game this weekend. A huge yes, game. We do. What are we and, betting? Uh, what are we, we got what are a we wager? Um, all right. Here's the wager. Your Purdue Boilermakers go up against my Arizona Wildcats. And and they're they're mine again now that I made up with Caleb Love and everything. Like I don't know. That. I don't think Tommy Lloyd feels that that you're like a part of the program. I'm a part. I'm a part for for this Saturday. I'm going to be a part. Okay, okay. just for this for wager. Day. For this wager, I'm I'm part of the program. Okay, so here's the deal. The deal is the loser, and I'm listen. The game's in Indy, so you should feel pretty good about this one. The loser yeah. has to wear the others school attire head to toe for a day head That's to toe Hat, on the pod on the pod everything the whole day like you can't take it off you gotta take so if i go to the gym yes i gotta yes. rock in arizona everything right, you know what they have some sick shorts the everything. shorts that they the, the shorts that they used to have when it was like the mike bibby oh they were awesome Awesome. I might just buy like a throwback Arizona jersey if they lose. All right, that's a good bet. I'm I'm with that. All right, and, and you know what? If if it's uh if Purdue wins, you got to buy my Purdue jersey and you got to rock that shit. Done, done. All right, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I don't know where I can buy it, but it, it, can you buy it? Or or you have to go on NBA.com and and I'm not make, getting your Timberwolves and make a Timberwolves jersey I'm not doing for two hundred eighty dollars. I, I will wear a Purdue. I will wear the the number four, the Hummel number four. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe the woman in the the store that told you know remember when I tried to to buy that jersey in yeah. the in she the, defended my honor knowing she did, that you're a, she a really did. asshole. I wore your shirt to the pump party and Dude, I wore it for two talk, hours. Let's talk about the pump party. Two I hours. didn't go. You did not I didn't go. go to the pump party. Why? <laughs> you're a moron. You're a moron. You believed it when I said I texted you. I said the pump party is can has been canceled. I and, know. I said, "Oh wow, they must have had something bad happen." I wonder why. <laughs> I literally just thought it was. So I how naive can you be? Like, what are you like twelve? You never said, "Hey, kidding." <laughs> I think Doster weighed in of something. No, like, no one said it was a joke, and we were we were at this other place anyway. But and I was hanging out with all my co my college buddies, yeah. so it, it didn't matter. But I actually I told somebody I forget who it was. Somebody said something about the pump party. I was like, oh, yeah, I heard it was canceled. And they looked at me like I was crazy. All because you said that. No, I, I went. 
I went, I sh- I posted a picture of me in your jersey. I was there for two hours and got completely ridiculed by people for wearing they, it. They probably were like, wow, what a, what an iconic jersey. You're smart. You're real smart. You know, Farnham came up to me. There were several people that came up and they were like, Stanford, Steve, like you wore the undershirt. And I'm like, yeah, because it wasn't part of the wager. Wow. Dude. It was not I'm, part if, of the original When we wager. bet on Arizona, when we make our wager on Arizona and Purdue next year, if you need if, to put it in my, there, if my side happens to lose. I'm just not going to do what, what the punishment is. I'm just going to take the lesser way out. Like you did. You need, you need to put it in, in the actual wager, which you never did before. And we'll, we'll play it at the end of the pod. I'll have, I'll have Jacob who produces the pod. I'll so have him Jacob put it then. in there. Jacob did this. He might have. He might have. Wow. Or not, so you just ratted him out. He might have. <laughs> this is why no one would want to work for you. You <laughs> you just totally ratted out Jacob. All right, Jacob. All right, anyway. this. I will never forget this, that you did this to me. By the way, the other thing in all this, in, in, in our trip to Phoenix, was we had a, a, a whole match scheduled. We had a doubles match where you bailed on playing right. with and against, with and against, like, your idol – when you were growing up, Homer Drew, you could have played pickleball on the same Dude, team against Scott Drew. You you gave me one window to do this. Not and true. I had to yes, it was. We could go back through you know what? Since we're looking for receipts, you said you had to be somewhere at like eleven thirty. And I think Scott had to be somewhere too. So the only time was nine thirty. I was already in a car over to Glendale. To film stuff. I we told I you the night before. We 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 allowed you to be able to kind of orchestrate the timing of this thing. Dude, you I, said you were good. You said you were good at 9 30. We had it scheduled. We had a know, place and then we I had thought, rackets. I thought I thought we were filming at, at 12 30. And then they decided no, we'll be able to get it done so that everybody can watch the Iowa game. And then I just I couldn't play. You've Dude, now I, ducked I, me. I wanted to. You've now ducked me in Chicago. And in Phoenix playing pickleball. Hey, I will say I ran into Mark Few. He was having a dinner with with all the Gonzaga guys. Um, you know, like Dan Monson was there and Leon Rice was there and a, a lot of just like his coaching tree. Yeah. You know, like the Gonzaga coaching tree was there. And he came over and, and I was talking to him and he said he had somehow heard about the pickleball game, the match. And he said that I would kill you. He said, "I've seen him play. I, he'll, he'll kill him." He told me he was he was giving you tips on the third shot drop. We were talking about the third shot drop. Yes, we were. Um, you know, when when a great pickleball mind is able to come around someone with great pickleball potential, those those <laughs> things, those conversations can be had. If he said, "Jeff, the third shot drop to you," you'd be like, "What's the third shot drop?" Oh, I know well, the I third shot just, drop. I just pound the ball into the net because I'm a bad player. No, I, I had already figured out what I was going to do on the first point. The first point, when the ball was hit to me, honestly, I had no intention of winning the point. I was going to hit it as hard as I could at your head. Which I'm six foot eight, so I literally would have went. <laughs> and that thing would have sailed right out of bounds. We'll see. You, it's well, not listen. like you're hitting, you're not hitting a pickleball 100 miles an hour. And in the first shot, you're all the way back. If you were smart. You would right, wait until third the shot. third shot. Third shot. See, you don't know. You don't third know the shot. game. You don't know the game right here, dude. <laughs> so you basically would pull a, a longest yard. And on the first play, you would just – you would go for the cheap shot. Dude, and we I win don't the mind. Play. Just like they did in the longest yard where they all cheap shot and the guy runs it back for a touchdown. If I go into the, the – what's it called? The kitchen? I don't care. I don't care. If, I, if the first play is illegal, I don't care as long as I hit you in the head with the ball because it would be wow. intimidating. Then you'd be yeah. done. I know it would be very easy to, to get you off your game talking trash. Listen, very I blew my knee out twice in eight months and then yeah. still came back and played in the NBA. You hitting me in the head with a pickleball wouldn't do shit to me. I, I can promise you that. All right, let's 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 move on for all those people that actually want to hear uh, your take <laughs> and my take on the final uh, four and the championship game. Um, let's start with your Purdue Boilermakers. Let's start there, and then we can go to UConn a little bit. Um First no, of all, let's start with, let's start with UConn. Okay, they that's deserve, fair. They deserve to go first. Yep. That, okay, that's fair. The champs. All right, so the UConn Huskies, man, it's remarkable when you look at what they've done these last two years. And because this year, I don't think they had the same level of, like, NBA talent maybe yeah. that they had last year. But, I mean, again, like, listen, 
I've said it to you for months here. Steph Castle would be a top five pick for me. He'd be a top five pick. You know, well, Donovan yeah, Klingon no is going to be an NBA player. Alex Caravan is going to end up playing in the NBA. Uh, I don't know about Tristan Newton. Uh, I don't know if he'll make the te- you know make a team, but he'll certainly get a, a, a shot I at think, it. I think Cam Spencer probably gets a shot too. Right? I do too. I do too. I think all five of them will have a chance. Uh, you know, my tweet from earlier this year about Indiana having uh, similar talent uh, in their starting five doesn't look so good right now. Castle didn't play that game. Castle didn't <laughs> play, and it was honestly more a it was more saying how great a coach Dan Hurley was at the time, and to me. How bad a coach Mike Woods? I mean, Indiana's backcourt is not in the same right. no stratosphere as UConn. No doubt. But. No doubt. But the UConn Huskies, what Dan Hurley has done in these two years is nothing short of remarkable. What I want to ask you is, a lot of people were coming up to me after the game and saying, like, is this one of the best teams of all time? Because of how they've dominated their competition for the last two years, and this year even more so, um, you played against some really good teams that that went to the Final Four and won the whole thing. I've watched, obviously, covered the sport for 25 years. In this era, Rob, this is one of the best teams of all time. In this era. But, yeah. again, you put them up against 92 Duke with Leighton right. or Hurley, Grand I, Hill, I think Thomas some Hill. of that, Jeff, is like the, the aura grows to me when time has passed and there ends up being really good NBA players on the team. Like, like to me, when you look at Florida and they, they go back to back, obviously they're, they're one of the iconic college basketball teams of, of this century. And I think they would be put up against like 92 Duke. And, but you're like, man, Al Horford, he's a multiple time all-star. Joe Kim Noah was a really good player. Corey Brewer, good NBA career. That to me, like grows it. Does that make sense? I know. Yes. I don't know if that necessarily should, because you look at the domination. The fact that UConn has played now ten NCAA tournament games and won all of them by double digits, and then now you've got the one seed in a Purdue team that I think against anybody else would have would have won the national title. Yeah, that that's that's amazing. Uh, we'll see kind of how that NBA boost gives them. Like like ninety two Duke, man. All right, Grant Hill's not, he was gonna if he doesn't get hurt, you're looking at a guy that's like a top three or four player in the NBA, and still was was that at times. Like he he was a really really good NBA player. Um, yeah, I I, I think that they they are that the way that they play defensively. A lot of teams have tried to do that game plan. It hasn't really worked. Why? Except for the, well, you when you've got the length and the discipline, and I, I just think that that team is so together on defense that you you've got to be locked in, yeah. and you've got to say, okay, we've got to be all right with Donovan looking like he's getting killed for the first ten minutes because he was, yeah. you know. Now he he started winning some of those battles. Yeah. He started getting some stops. And he made and- Edie work. He made Edie he did. work. He did. That was the no doubt. He thing. wasn't. He wasn't getting just punked out. You know, like he yep. and Edie made some really tough shots to start the game. He had the up and under. He he yep. was scoring over the top of him. Like he he made some nice plays. Um, but it just it takes so much discipline to to not go down there, not lose your mind. Then when you've got Samson Johnson there, all right, we're trapping now to give him help because he's a little bit you know light in the ass compared to Donovan Klingon. And when they did, no breakdowns on the backside, no breakdowns rotating to shooters. That they were so on it. That that was that was incredible to watch. And then some of the actions Danny Hurley runs. I I swear to God, I've never seen the skip pass into the handoff shit. I don't know where he got that from, but it, that shit is high level. And we'll see a lot of people running it next year. I promise you that because everybody copies the good it's stuff. The yeah. slip he got for Caravan in the second half is like. This dude is, he's wheeling and dealing, no doubt. Um, and they have the players that can run it, Rob. Like, you have uh, yeah, to exactly. have the right players that can run that stuff because it is more complicated. And, and you, yeah. I said it, like, you've got to have high IQ players. And they've got that. They've got tough, high IQ, skilled dudes. They don't have a weakness. They they don't. I, I was so impressed. I really was. They they are an incredibly deserving national champion. And to go back to back is an incredible achievement. Um, I don't know who do they lose. I guess they'll lose a lot, right? Caravan could they come could back. lose all of them, but they could lose Caravan. Caravan could just say, you know what? It's a weak draft. 
Uh, I'm going to be what I'm going to be. You know what's crazy? He didn't even play well. No, no. For the whole tournament, he didn't play well. Semifinal, he was good. Second half of the the semifinal game. He made some shots in the second half. But, yes, he was just okay. But I think think he probably goes somewhere in the second round, you know, in the 40s or 50s, probably something like that. Maybe even the 30s. Uh, But Castle's gone. Klingon's gone. Newton's obviously gone. um, And Spencer's obviously gone. So Absolutely. they're going to have a complete rebuild for the most part. And, you know, it's going to be interesting. They missed out on Cooper flag to, to Duke. So how good will they be? I mean, Hurley is a, he's a, he's a relentless worker. And that's part of the reason why they're so good, Rob. Is, yeah, but their, their history has become unbelievable. Yeah. Like we, we did that, the, the watch party for Bleacher Report. And we're, we're having guests on from UConn. And it's like, all right, Rip Hamilton is on the show. Karan Butler is on the show. Rudy Gay is on the show. You're like, no, wow. They, got, they had dude. <laughs> and you guys, I know, had a Mecca Okafor on. And, you know, you, you've Probably got... Probably the wave on. Ray, ben Ray Gordon's Allen is in, the, is in the building. Ben Gordon played for the... Like, they had... Kemba. Un, yeah, Kemba Walker. Their, their team... Even the team... we lost, The funny thing is that Purdue lost to UConn in that building in 2009. Yeah. And Kemba Walker was their sixth man. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, like he's he's and Jerome Dyson had gotten hurt, and if he doesn't, they could have won the whole thing. Right? Jerome Dyson blew his knee out. They had nice. AJ Price, they had Jeff Adrian, they had Hashim to beat. They were they were loaded, like they were really really good. Um, but yeah, it's like uh, I was having PTSD of Hashim to beat putting my shot in the stands down there in the one end zone because <laughs> they 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 got us there too you know like we we just are, we're zero two against UConn in that building. The best month of the year is here, which is why you need to know that we are partnered with Bet MGM. We'll be using Bet MGM lines for making all of our picks and predictions, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of sixty eight. If you haven't signed up for Bet MGM yet, you can use bonus code Field and you. Will get up to a fifteen hundred dollar first bet offer on your first wager with Bet MGM. Here's the best part: all you need to do is deposit and bet ten dollars of your hard earned money to get it. This is what you have to do to make it work: download the Bet MGM app and sign up using that bonus code at Field. Deposit at least ten dollars and place your first wager on any game. You'll get up to fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets if your bet loses just make sure you use that bonus code field when you sign up most importantly we have some fun stuff coming up for the rest of the ncaa tournament bet insurance tokens college hoops odds boost and the thing that i love the most a nice little parlay boost as well as a ridiculous array of prop bets for anything that you could possibly imagine betting on from odds on getting to the final four to national championship futures i'm calling it right now bet mgm is the king of the prop bet so go download the bet mgm app Use that code FIELD and sign up today. And while I've got you a quick request, the best way to support the Field of 68 content you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the pod in any podcast app. Like and share the YouTube videos that you enjoy. Tell your friends about us. It all helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. But they they are a, a elite national champion. I think that there's a good chance that we look at them as they, they are – one of the best teams of this era. And, you know, who knows? Maybe if some of these guys blow up, if Steph Castle becomes an elite NBA player or one of those other then guys do, changes. maybe we do look at it like yeah. like 92 Duke. I I don't know why I feel that way, but I do think that when you have good pros, it builds the legend of the team. Sure, sure. You look at it and you're like, you look at some of the, you know, the last UConn team with Shabazz Napier winning it all, and you're like, all right, like look at their roster, and right. it's and underwhelming. That, honestly, you think, "Wow, what an incredible uh, run they're on, yes. or coaching job," because yep. their roster just wasn't it wasn't crazy. Yeah. All right, let's let's get to your Purdue team a little bit here, and, and just kind of putting a wrap on the season and, and what Paint did and what Zach Eady did, and obviously they came up short. But you know, I said it. I I feel like with getting to the Final Four. Uh, you were playing with a little bit of house money when you played UConn because nobody expected him to win. Uh, Paint gets to the – he gets the monkey off his back, which he needed. He needed, Rob, because if they had another first weekend exit, the 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 skeptics were going to be out. They were going to be out. Well, they of, were hey, already out. Like right. Tommy Lloyd is going through it now, I'm sure, right? Like that just – that becomes the nature of the beast and not that Tommy Lloyd's a – he's a good coach. Yep. Yep. You know, like they – I just, 
I think that we are a little too quick sometimes to talk about like, oh, well, he can't win the big game because all the, a lot of the coaches that we now look at as some of the legends or icons had some real issues in the tournament, you know, like, and it, it hits everybody now three in a row to double digit seeds. I, I get the disappointment. I understand, you know, that's not supposed to be what happens when you get a one, two or a three seed. Um, but yeah, for him, um, I just an unbelievable run. They, they had an unbelievable season. Um, unbelievable. I, a no. lot of teams would have the FDU thing happen and it, it could break them. Like it could break a team where you're like, man, I, I just, whether you don't stay together or you just, you're not able to handle the pressure. They, they've they been under pressure for March since like the day after that FDU game. Sure. And every game that they've won and been impressive in doing it. And they played an, an insane non-conference schedule that, yep. that really probably prepared them and helped them get to where they got. But even after every win, all you'd hear is, well, they won't they won't win in March. They, they'll lose in the first round. Can't wait to the, I don't know how many things I saw on Twitter when we would tweet about Purdue about, well, wait till March. They'll definitely lose in the first round. And it's like that's where you want to go back and just, you know, hammer everyone on Twitter that says that to you. Because I thought it was a different team all year long. I thought their mentality, their mindset, they were so locked in. And I you saw it at times during the final uh, in the NCAA tournament. They weren't even like celebrating At winning all. outside of the Elite Eight win. Right. They really didn't. Even when they beat NC State in the Final Four, everyone I talked to that went in the locker was like, no, it was really muted. Yeah. It was really focused. They were yeah. just, they're looking ahead to the next game. Um, they, they didn't celebrate the first weekend. They didn't celebrate the Gonzaga game. And it's like, man, I hope they're able to enjoy this, but I also respect it. I get where they've come from, you know, and and, and what a year that those, those young guards had of Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, um, I know Fletcher didn't have the game that he probably hoped for in the national title game. But can I, with can that I ask being you said, about that while we're there? Can I ask you about that part yeah. of, of the game and your thoughts of Paint kept going to the well, which he had done all year for the most part with Edie. Uh, a lot of teams had a double, and then he would kick out to the, to the open shooters. Well, there weren't open shooters, obviously, on Monday night because they didn't have to double. Um, right. My question to you, would you have when they're not when they're not doubling, Rob, I think those shooters were just standing around mm -hmm. instead of cutting the basket, trying to get easy baskets that way or getting some movement. And I know they didn't play that way for much of the year, but like could Payne have done something different? Like if you're looking at it objectively, and I'm sure he is now, I'm sure he's going through it. I'm like, what could I have done differently? Because they made one three all game. This is a team that was they second took, took in the seven. country. They took seven of them. Right. Their volume. And you know what? We thought Alabama was going to take 50. They took yeah. 23 or 24. So, like, they obviously UConn, outside of the scheme, had people that were able to limit. I just, I just think when you look at UConn's guards, you know, they're going to be able to manhandle. And I think this is where the next step for Fletcher Lawyer is. All right, you gotta get you gotta get in the weight room yes. and you've gotta you gotta try to put on 15 or 20 pounds. He looked like a boy out there. He honestly yeah. looked like a boy. But the thing about him. him is he he's he's not scared nope. and he nope. he can he makes big shots. I think the next thing for him has got to be all right, I've I've got to kind of change my body here so that I can handle and, and for some people that's a lot harder to do. Um, you know, I think about Jawan Johnson back in the day where man, that dude was benching like 300 pounds and he's power cleaning a ton of weight. Yeah. He'd eat like crazy and gain no weight. Like it, yeah. it's just some some guys have a hard time, but whether that's changing your diet or whatever whatever he needs to do, that that's that's what he needs to do to take the next step. I I just don't you know, know what he I, should I do. Think guys like Rob, he I think should guys, just come down to Charleston with me for a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think guys like Steph Castle, yeah. Cam Spencer, they're big, they're physical, um, they're old. Yep. You know, yep. I just I'm sure there's things that that Matt Painter feels like. Well, I could have run this or run that um but i'm sure he also felt like with the single coverage this this is what we've wanted all year long I know. I but know. it became that that was it was all it was every time and no one else was really involved outside of the braden smith pick and roll stuff yeah. um and i think you know with braden smith and pick and roll and, and again i didn't get to watch the game like intently because we had guests on and we were yeah. doing a bunch of other stuff yeah. and you're we were far away we were up in the 200 level um which is 
But in, in those stadiums, you are far Way back if you're in the yes. 200 level. Um, but yeah, I I think that there's you know there's probably some things that he he would like to go back as all coaches would say you know after a loss well, what 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 else could I have done differently? Whether that's running some of the stuff to off off screens to get him open or you know they they needed Lance Jones and Fletcher to to play really well yep. and they and did. even with like Braden Smith and the ball screen stuff with UConn's length. Those skip passes are harder to throw, you know, like that, that stuff is not easy. So um, yeah, credit to UConn. I'm, I'm sure that they feel like maybe there's a few things they could have done otherwise, but UConn was just, they're just better. They were the better team. They were the best team clearly this year and, and they deserved it. Uh, but I thought again, paint probably uh, locked in uh, him getting in the hall of fame. I think by going to the final four in the championship game here. Uh, and I think it took, you know, it gave Purdue and the program a, a little more uh, respect by getting that far. Well, and how about the way that the fans showed up? Oh, they were awesome. Awesome. I mean, I, I mean, bet both, there was – Both fan bases were great. Yeah. Great. yeah. And UConn was split. Yep. And they went last year. Like, that. Yes. that's hard. Because going to the Final Four is not, like, an affordable thing. Right. You know, like, that, in Phoenix. that's what's, that's what's right. kind of sad, I think, is that if, if your team makes the Final Four, you're going to spend – I mean, hotels, yes. tickets were insane. Yep. I had a buddy that spent, he spent 1700 on a ticket because wow. he wanted to sit in the lower bowl, yep. you know, and that's that's what they were going for. Um, it never came down, huh? I didn't look. I don't, at the, I don't know if they did or not. I, I'm not sure. But between food, not. lodging, transportation, yeah. you, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. Whether you are a world-class athlete or a podcaster like myself, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and proper recovery for top-notch performance. After a six-month season loaded with cross-country travel and late nights, I can promise you that proper recovery is a priority for me these days. That is why I'm excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of The Field of 68. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers that's powered by the Energy Enhancement System, or the EE System. If you haven't heard of the EE System yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you're here in New Jersey or at hundreds of other locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. Are you interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Well, all you got to do is go to unifiedhealing.com slash field to learn more and find a center near you. You can find that link in the description below. That's unified, U-N-I-F-Y-D, healing.com slash field. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before you undertake a new healthcare regimen, including the EE system. All right, let's let's move on to probably the biggest story in college basketball this week. Not probably, definitely, other than the, the national title game. That was John Calipari being the surprise hire at Arkansas. Kind of came out of nowhere, Rob, largely because Cal doesn't have an agent, number one, and Arkansas didn't use a search firm. So that wow. combo, and they missed. Remember, they tried Chris Beard. They tried Jerome Tang. Both said no. Then they went to Calipari. So it wasn't like he was like, their number one choice. But was it true that he was like back channeling to Ohio State and trying to figure that out? Well, I think, yeah, I think his people, he wanted, he knew he needed to get out of Kentucky, right? He knew he needed to get out, but there were only a few jobs that he would take. Um, I'm not sure if he would have taken Ohio State, but certainly I think he would have looked at it because, you know, listen, do you want to go to work every day somewhere where you know you're really not wanted? I mean, no, that's, I watched this video on the plane yesterday. That, yeah. That's essentially what this is, right? Yeah. Like just, yeah I don't blame him. 15 years. No, I get that. How, like, do you think though, that all Kentucky fans feel that way? Or is it like the, the louder minority of fans? No, I don't think it's way? a minority. I don't think really? it's a minority, but I don't think it's all. I think there's still a lot of Kentucky fans that felt like, listen, why can't he flip this thing back? All he's got to do is change his philosophy a little bit and go look at, you know, getting older 
and and getting some guys that are high IQ players that because again he had talent we know that like they might have more talent than almost anybody in the country this year but you didn't have enough veteran dudes you didn't have enough of those guys and I thought they duplicated a little bit like I don't think DJ Wagner gave them what they needed with with a guard like that they needed a well, you, could, you could argue minded. that roster construction it was Terrible. not roster talent it was roster construction yeah maybe, maybe. which i always say still, i'm like they still I remember were when like, they got all those guys last year and i was like they can get as much talent as they want but if if the roster doesn't fit yeah. and, and look at indiana with that right the roster did not fit together they had enough talent to be an ncaa tournament team maybe even a, a sweet 16 team but that you don't have shooters no, indiana's backcourt was not Without you know Xavier Johnson's injury, yeah, and and some of the things that happened, Indiana's backcourt was not good enough. Agreed. Kentucky's Agreed. backcourt was good enough. Yes, and they addressed the shooting issues. They shot a lot of threes. They scored. They just couldn't guard. Right. They could 65 not guard anybody. Years old. Cal sixty five. He hasn't really done uh, anything in the tournament the last four years. They're going to have all the resources you want in Arkansas, all of them between Walmart and Tyson, you know, Foods and. Everybody wants to get involved now and help out in NIL. He's going to have five, six million dollars in NIL. Be able to get who he wants for the most part. What so, was he doing? What was he? Ha- what did he have to play with in Kentucky? I would say around three would be my guess. The doubles the NIL pool. Doubles the NIL pool. So he's going to get what he wants now. And and my big question to you, I I think he's going to be super motivated because no, you know I, when you I, get I, run yeah, out of somewhere, which he felt like he pretty much got run out, you're going to an in league rival. The, the the probably the second best job in the league. I know people are going to argue with me about Texas, but Arkansas is a basketball school. Their fan base is insane. Look at the resources now. So I think he's going to be super motivated, and I think he's going to get this thing going pretty quick. The question I have is, again, roster construction, not talent, roster construction. Are they going to make the right decisions with this money? Well, do you think he'll still stay with a recruiting high-level freshman? Sure. Yeah. So that I was just wondering if that was because of the success in 2012 at Kentucky and it kind of became their thing that they were known for. If now he could pivot, I mean, I guess it would be a change in philosophy, but I, I was thinking maybe, you know, does he does the fresh start allow him to just hit the portal? I I don't know. I think it'll be a co- if he's smart, you know, he had six kids signed, uh, six freshmen signed at Kentucky. I wouldn't bring all six. There's no reason. To me, the ultimate blend is, and if you got six million, five, six million, you can go get six transfers, go bring in three of those freshmen. That'll get you to nine. And then bring like three guys with you. You know, go get Aaron Bradshaw, try to get him. I don't know if he even wants him, but go get two of the bigs on Yen Su. Guys big, that big know Z. his system. Big Z. Big Z. Bring, bring Big Z. You want to bring Wagner? Bring Wagner. The Big Z hype after his first game was remarkable. It was remarkable. It was we remarkable. Never, listen, we never saw a, a, a debut like that. We never. I'm not sure we ever did. <laughs> at, at that time, out of nowhere. That feels like him. three seasons ago that Big Z, we were talking about his debut. You thought he was Jokic after that debut. I did not debut. say that. We're going to go, we're gonna have to have someone literally combing the archives for the crap that you said. With that behind the back pass, you were like, "That looks like Jokic." Just I did hundred pounds that. lighter. I did not say that. Hundred pounds. That was a nice lighter. pass, though. He had some so, nice plays in that game. So, give me your, give me your kind of, uh, your guess of what John Calipari does at Arkansas. What your does he get him to a Final Four? Does he? You know, does he just kind of get him the tournament? And does he do better than Eric Musselman, who went to two Elite Eights and a Sweet 16 well, before Muss, this Muss past year kind of being with, mediocre? Yeah, Muss, Muss had it rolling before this year. Yeah. And it seemed like they had some internal uh, like turmoil on yeah. the team from afar. Um, I think that'd be fair to say this year. Yeah, I, I don't see why. If you've got all the resources and you've got a guy that's been in the Final Four, he could go to the Final Four. Uh, I, I don't see any reason why Arkansas could do that. I, I think that, you know, Cal certainly, they, they played a fun brand of basketball that I think guys would want to play in this year. It's not like two years ago where we were saying, man, what are we watching on offense, right? Like that, that was, that was brutal to watch. So yeah, I, I think if, if he's got this NIL and we know how rabid their fan base is, 
I don't like the in conference moves. Um, I think that more from a player's perspective. I I hate the fact that there's all conference players transferring within conferences. So I don't really like the coaching move in conference either. I think that's weird. Uh, right. But yeah, but the, I, I don't. The see leagues it. are so big now. That's the problem. No, that's, now that's true. But Arkansas and and Kentucky have been in the SEC for a long time. It's not like it's you know Missouri, one of those new schools. I don't know. I he can make the Final Four. I, I see no reason why he could not. And I'm sure, like you said, the motivation level is going to be really high. Right. Right. I mean, I I, I think again, it's going to be one of those things, Rob, where people are going to be like. No matter what, they're going to be watching now. They're going to be watching. You know, picture goes out there this morning of Cal in, in maroon or red or whatever Arkansas's color is, and it's like, whoa, it's going to take a while to, to get yeah. used to this. The weird thing is, is that I just feel that he is so Kentucky. Like, yeah. when I when I look at him, sure. I know he's coached at UMass and Memphis, but I think of him as, in, in the NBA, I think of him as the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. Sure. So it'll be weird to see him somewhere else. So as we're recording this, it's uh, noon. It should have been 10 a.m., but it's it's noon instead. 11 Central, though. 11 Central, that's true. Um, Kentucky's looking for a head coach. And uh, Nate Oates is out of the equation. Um, there was some interest. Another more SEC cannibalization. Yes, yes. <laughs> a lot of it. Well, the best – hey, the best candidates, some of them are in the SEC for the Kentucky job, right? Um, Billy Donovan, I don't believe, is a legitimate – Camp. He might be after his own team uh, blocked their own alley oop dunk last night. What happened? I, I I heard All about right. Andre Drummond like picks a guard for the Knicks. I don't. I was watching the game, and Tory Craig gets the steal, and he's he's driven dribbling down, and he goes he throws it off the backboard. Yeah, he was throwing it to himself because okay. he was going to go up and dunk it. Drummond, I think, was running the floor behind him, and he thought he was throwing it up for him. So. He's right behind him and trying to dunk it on top of Craig, who's also trying to dunk it. And there's a photo going around. Tory Craig's eyes are like so wide. And Andre Drummond's right behind him and they missed the dunk. And then Drummond ended up getting hurt on the next play. So, yeah, it's it's not, not a good thing. There is nothing better in sports than tournament time, which is why I need to tell you guys about our partners over at Rhythm. If you're into sports betting, you need Rhythm, the place for data back props and picks. For those that are unfamiliar, Rhythm, spelled R-I-T-H-M-M, is the go-to mobile app for player props and game picks. Backed by AI predictive models, Rhythm helps you make smarter and faster betting decisions across all sports, but particularly college basketball. With Rhythm, you get data back pits for every single Division I game, every single day users get free picks daily with the ability to upgrade to unlimited access if you want to increase your edge and win more bets go to the link in the description and download rhythm today that's r-i-t-h-m-m the place for data backed props and picks and while we're here let me tell you about our newest partner for the month of march splash sports the home of certified community competition where you get to play against your friends and not the house. Whatever game it is that you are playing, from survivors to tears to pick X, the safest way to play for real money without the hassle of having to track down deposits or worry about payments is through Splash. They have partnered with PaySafe, the best deposit and payment system in the world, to ensure that money stays in safe hands and is delivered to the right places. To join the Field of 68 Survivor Madness, Click the link in our profile below and join in. Entries are five bucks a pop with a prize pool of up to $4,500. Winner take all. Join Splash and come prove that you're smarter than us. So, anyway, I don't think Billy Donovan would, would touch this Kentucky job right now. You know, he's still employed. He's about as focused as it gets. Well, and he'd have to like probably leave now. No, and he could wait. I mean, if they really and let the portal and let the portal do its thing. Well, you you you'd have to like, I don't know what you do. It's too complicated. It's no, that's why happen. it's hard. I, you, not going to happen. You can't not, not take the job in the next couple of days. You'll miss out on all these guys in the portal. Correct. So they're talking to Scott Drew right now. We know that. Um, What's your take of Scott Drew to Kentucky if he does decide to take this shot? I guess you know it would Scott it would well. it would depend on what's the raise, you know, how much more is Kentucky? Well, whatever willing. they can pay him, whatever they want. 
I mean, Kentucky, if they want him, they're going to be able to pay him more than Baylor. No, he's I know. Gonna... But if, if they're offering him $5 million and he's making four and a half at Baylor, that might not be. But if they're offering him $10 million, yeah, that's a lot more money. Right. Um, so like, what are they paying him? How much does he enjoy living in Waco? You know, how much do you enjoy the fact that you've won a national title? The expectations are up there, but not crazy. You know, I don't think Baylor fans were like insane when they didn't what they get to this year, the Sweet 16 or they when they lose. No, second round. Second round. Has there been like backlash to him? I I don't no. you know they can no, He can do whatever he wants in Waco. He exactly. can, have a, so, so he like can win five nice... games this year, Rob, and and still they, they're loving him. Yeah. He's built but he's built that. They were on the death penalty, you know, like uh, they yes. they were literally dead in the water and he has gone down there and transformed that program. Um but yeah if, I I guess it just depends on what he wants. Does, do you want a new challenge? Are you getting a crazy raise? Does your family want to live in Lexington? Are you okay with the expectations that, you know, and I, I don't know the answers to those questions, but that's what it's going to come down to. You've built such a good thing at Baylor. You've got a new stadium. You get big time recruits. You've won at the highest level. You've proven that the big 12 is a good league, but you know, a lot of these coaches, I think feel And not that the Big 12 is bad, but the SEC and the Big 10 are the power players in football, right? Like, those are the places that you know are going to have money. So I I get that. Like, I I think there's a lot that goes into it. It's It's a complicated process. So I think if he doesn't take this, he knows this is it. He will retire and wake up. And he's, you know, 51, 52 years old. He's got 10 or 15 years left. They're going to build the statue for him no matter if he, if he stays forever, even if he leaves today. They'll still build the statue for him. 22 years there. What he did there is insane. I think it just comes down to family. I do. I because Listen, as much as everybody's like, well, he won a national title at Baylor. Well, he recruited pros, and he keeps getting pros, right? Jacoby Walter and Eves Missy. Like, those guys are going to be first-round picks. It's just easier at Kentucky. It's easier to be able to recruit – the highest level player. He's been able to do it at Baylor, but it, it's not easy. I think it's easy at Kentucky. You have all the resources in the world. You don't have to worry about flying commercial anywhere. You're flying private. You're getting whatever you need. Couldn't he also probably take the Kentucky job and leverage that into getting some of those things at Baylor? Not not the ease of getting. He's already done stuff. that. He just he pretty much did that with Louisville. So I don't know how much more he's going to get now. I mean, yes, well, you, you can get keep more. Me, then this is what we need to do. Right, right. Yeah, you can. Of course you can. That's not Scott's personality. Scott's not a guy who's going to go in and demand a ton of stuff. All right, that's let me ask you this, because that's, that's a good place to go, too. Do you think that with his personality that some of the maybe issues that Big Blue Nation brings to you are, I mean, that's that's a different microscope. Totally. I don't I know saw a video he's of ready John Calipari that. walking his dog. Right. Now he might have been doing that on purpose, but <laughs> that's you know, that's not happening in most places, I feel like. You know, Kentucky Scott, is a different. The, the great thing about Scott is, right, is they're a nicer, um, more social human being than Scott Drew. Yeah, he's great. Right? So like yeah. he can fit in a different way at Kentucky. He's not always well, going to be I agree, but I'm just saying, days. you know, you're you're at Baylor and you have a tough stretch. There, it's not the same as when you have a tough stretch at, at okay. Kentucky. I hear that's you. That's all. And I just, I mean, that's that's a personal thing for him. I'm not saying that coaches can't do it. Right. There have been plenty that have. I just am saying for him, I don't know if, you know, if that really matters to you, you lose a couple of games and everybody's ready to fire you until you until you get off the schneid. That's different than what we see at Baylor. But aren't you looking at it of like, <laughs> hey, I know I'm going to win at Kentucky. Like I'm, I mean, I'm not. No I'm not worried. That job, thinking they're not. I'm sure Billy Gillespie, Gillespie thought he was going to win at Kentucky. Well, yeah, but he Bully Clyde was like the worst hire ever. I, I mean, know, but I'm just saying he didn't take the job thinking. Well, I'm just going to milk this for five years, get my ass whooped, and collect a check. I also think it's the perfect hire after Cal, right? Mitch Barnhart is a religious guy, uh, is a culture guy, is a guy that's dealt with the highest of highest egos for the last 15 years. With Cal, now you get Scott Drew. You're like, and, and as Barnhart is kind of finishing up his career as AD, like who better to want to deal with these last few years? Like, you're not. He's low maintenance. You know, he's gonna win. 
He's going to do it the right way. He's going to work his butt off. Like all the things that Cal really. No, he'd be, he'd be a good hire. Right. I'm just saying for him. Yeah. Do you, I hear do you. you want some of the things that are going to come? And it's family, him? Rob. It's he's got a daughter at Baylor. He's got two sons who are younger. Like that is hard right now. That's all they've known. That family is, mm-hmm. is growing up in Waco, Texas. And again, like you said, you're revered there. You've already built up that equity that everybody loves you in Waco, where you go to Kentucky, you have the pressure to have to win and win right away. Like if you if you don't win next year, people will be thinking like, did we make the wrong call? Why didn't yeah. we call Bruce Pearl? Right? No, I, I, it'll be fascinating to see how this plays out. And, so, but let's say he says, if he says no, who do they go to next? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I would think, and, and I don't know if they're going to go this route because again, Mitch Barnhart had to be convinced and persuaded heavily. He didn't want to hire Cal Perry because of all the stuff that people were saying about Cal cheating. So yeah. are you going to then go and hire Bruce Pearl, Chris Beard, Sean Miller, guys that have been through Dude, the things. SEC is just, so all the candidates are from SEC school. Oh, well, Sean Miller's in the big biggies. No, yes. I know where he's at. Yes. But Bruce but Pearl, Pearl, Chris Beard, I think would be in the equation. So, Do you think that Beard feels like a loyal? I mean, Ole Miss gave him a lifeline when a lot of people. Well, he was loyal. Like, he was loyal. He didn't. Yeah, he didn't take. So, he didn't take Arkansas. But Kentucky would be a different. Possibly, I mean, I, I it might be. I don't know. I mean, again, if you're offering, you know, eight million a year, ten million, who knows? They may get to a point where they're they're they have to get a guy, and somebody benefits here. You know, again, I think it'll be interesting to see. If Scott Drew is the guy, which I think he'll be, does he take it? Does he take this thing? And then if he does, Jerome Tang maybe back to Baylor? I don't know yeah. if he signed his contract at, at Kansas State. Remember, he turned what down you, Arkansas. So What do you mean signed his contract? At, like the new extension? contract at Kansas State. A new oh, they deal. gave him a new one. They yeah. gave him an extension for that. Yeah, yeah. You know, if he didn't, he can go to Baylor. If, if he's locked in at Kansas State now, do they go Bryce Drew at Baylor? <laughs> that would be crazy. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot wild. going on here. We thought yeah. the uh, the coaching well, this, this is, was kind of over. I and... know, but this is, again, like the LeBron f- free agent sweepstakes where he, everything gets held up waiting for one person to make a decision. And you know where it all started? This whole – this whole SMU. Yeah. Rob Lanier getting fired. Right? After Rob Lanier gets seasons. fired. And Andy Enfield takes SMU. And then Musk takes USC, and then Cal takes Arkansas, and now we got Kentucky. It's like the reverse of what we're used to. Right. The yes. American Conference was able the to The dominoes went the other way. The dominoes yeah, exactly. went the other way this time. Exactly. That's it crazy. is crazy. All right. Well, listen, uh, since you showed up late, I actually have something to do, so I got I to gotta wrap this thing. Uh, how's the weather looking for you this week? You going to be able to get out there or no? You know, I've, I'm doing a couple Bulls games this week, so I've got some stuff to do. But it is 66 today and sunny in Chicago. So you going to get out there today or no? I did have yesterday before I left the hotel, though, I was hitting some balls on the driving range at the hotel I was staying at, and my driver had cracked. Oh, you got to get a new one. I'm going to have to go to the repair shop here. And it's definitely not repairable. It's going to have to buy a new one. Yeah, it's a sad day. Bad day. I was piping drives, too. 300 right down the middle. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. All right. All right. Could be the last one ever. Negotiations will be ongoing. Good luck to our agents. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Have have Maury call Rob Doster. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us. Another episode, Goodman and Hummel Pod. Uh, maybe the last one for a little while. We'll see if we can get Robbie back on. I, I think the portal, the portal brings some interesting things. I bet does. we'll have another one of those. Yeah, I think we'll have a, a, another couple. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, the fans, I will say this. I will say this. I had so many fans, uh, Purdue fans, even UConn fans coming up to me and saying how much they liked our podcast. So uh, yeah. I think more for you than me. Uh, but I think I but think you people, said that some were saying that they feel bad for you, that I treat you poorly. They can't believe this side of you. Like this side of you, they just they can't get over the fact of how mean spirited you are to you me. No, it's I think it's just all the jokes about how unathletic I am and it's just it's it's it pushed it pushed me to the edge. <laughs> it pushed me to the edge to have to respond. All I know is I want to see you throw a football farther than 42 yards. 
I could easily yards. could. I, I thought that I'd get more trash talk from Doster. He really has – he's laid off being that his team won the national title. He's, he's You should have seen class. him throw a football. If you had seen – if I have you not. saw him throw a football, he, you'd, you'd never hear trash talking from him. I just, I was surprised that he's a win with class, lose with class kind of guy. He won, and I thought he'd be. Oh, trust me. It's early. Hey, Robbie, it's <laughs> early. We got a whole summer of this. Give him time. Give him time. All right. We're going to, yeah. we're going to play. Actually, hopefully, Jacob, Jacob will put it in maybe earlier in the show, the, uh, the clip. Uh, with with the actual wager and the fact that you just made stuff up after a wager. I mean, who who does that? Who just makes up adds to the wager after we agree to it? Unbelievable. You act like you're this, you know, model of of uh, preposterous. Absolutely preposterous. You're not. You're not uh, the model of honor. So I don't want to hear this <laughs> from you. You throw shit in there. I'm gonna, you know, when Arizona and Purdue play next year and we make this, uh, some stupid wager, I'm just not gonna do it if I lose. I did it. Did. I wore the producer for two hours out in public. Your your no. jersey. You to were supposed party. to show off. It was supposed to be this to the to the shoulder. Well, maybe next pod I'll I'll I'll, I'll show you my guns. Maybe <laughs> next pod we'll see. That means we'll see. I quit for sure. <laughs> I quit for sure. I don't. All want right, to go back to bed. bed. Go back no, to I'm sleep. To, Take I'm another nap. Bed. Maybe you're, you'll look a little better when you wake up. Thanks. <laughs> Good Minute Hummel podcast, and we got Robbie Hummel. I'd known you since you were a kid. I could blow my knee out, both knees, and still kick your ass. We're trying to find the Robbie Hummel statue. I wanted to kill you. 